Everybody, I am super pumped to welcome my good friend and mentor and author and badass all around, Chris Doris, to the monthly Fireside Chat. Uh, for those of you who don't know Chris, I first met him over 10 years ago at Salesforce, where I was an account executive, and he came in to do a workshop on mental toughness. I didn't realize at the time, but I would be sharing a lot of his work and some of his philosophies to this group and um, a lot of the principles we teach in our mindset module are rooted in stoicism and are rooted on you know a lot of the uh, philosophies that you share, including this one, which is yeah. the problem is the gift. So big plug for Chris. Um, many people have read this book of mental toughness mantras in this program and it's a required reading as far as I'm concerned for mental toughness. So uh, to give you guys some background on Chris, he is, or he was a former sports psychologist, therapist, and social worker. He's now a mental toughness and executive coach. Chris has coached several of the top performing sales teams and leaders in the world. He's trained famous actors, athletes, and NFL, NHL coaches, business executives, Super Bowl champions, and billionaires. He's the author of three books, including the book of mental toughness mantras, which I just showed, and now Chris has graciously offered to spend an hour with us and with you guys to share all of his wisdom. So Chris, uh, I'm thrilled to have you. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks, brother. Let me, let me just say, uh, first of all, congratulations to everybody who's on this call for making doing whatever you did to get with this guy because he is a legend. And I can say with absolute uh, conviction that Ian has walks the talk as as good as anybody. I, he he invests in himself perpetually, which is why he's such a superstar. And I am honored to be your guest brother. I'm, I always love spending time with you. Chris, you were one of the first people I called when I was thinking of doing coaching. At the time, I was at Salesforce making a lot of money and I was very hesitant to leave and go off on my own, unsure of what, what was going to happen. And I remember your advice. I remember when and where we had the conversation and you said, you got to do it. That's what you told me. You said, you got to do it. It was not, no hesitation in your answer. And you're killing it. I'm glad. I'm glad I listened and I'm glad I have mentors like you to guide me. So thank you for those kind words. Let's dive in. We don't have a ton of time and I have a lot of questions. So my first question is really around mental toughness. How do you define mental toughness? Oh, okay. Yeah, I love that. So this is my answer. You won't find anywhere. You know, if you Google mental toughness, you're not going to find what I'm about to say. I'm going to say it twice. It's a little bit long. Mental toughness is a superpower. It's a skill that is hard earned through diligent inner world work and training. Specifically, it is the ability to respond to all of life rapidly with grace, mastery, like that. Uh, creative genius and enthusiasm so that we can get to the creation of excellence faster with least effort. All right, I'll repeat that. Mental toughness is the ability that is earned through diligent inner world training, right, practicing, and is the ability to respond to all, not some, not most, all, all of life rapidly with grace, mastery, creative genius, and enthusiasm so that we can get to the creation of excellence faster with least effort. All right. So my first question is not what I told you it would be, but it's absolutely top of mind right now. I'm thinking of a time when I got injured. Specifically, I did something stupid. I threw a Frisbee over a neighbor's fence. I tried to jump it and stub my toe and it's still bothering me right now and interfering with my workouts and running and whatnot. Um, how do you respond to that with enthusiasm and grace and excitement when you get sick or injured or just something stupid happens that really messes with your world? Just, you know, okay, you, practically you, speaking. You don't. I mean, you, theoretically, you can. OK, but that's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, unless you really wanted to and you do on like I mean, like mind blowing amounts of reprogramming. So you can ultimately, with training, you could respond pretty rapidly, I think, because you have the pain response. And then you could say, well, I'll create from this. Right? You could, if you wanted to. 
when I'm, I'll tell you what, when I'm sick, that's the hardest set of circumstances for me to, to, to really be mentally tough. Mm -hmm. I think it's true for a lot of people. Me too. For sure. Right. With injury. Does I'll say, here's the thing. It's not about always being happy. Mental toughness isn't about, yeah, happy thoughts and always being full of joy and bliss and laughter. And, oh, I just broke my leg. Well, what do you know about that? No, it's like, how do I want to be? It's the ability to choose. Choose your response. If you want to choose to be pissed off, then do it like a boss. But choose your response. We don't choose our responses, man. See, that's what mental toughness training is about. Mm -hmm. freeing ourselves from the conditioning of our past that would have us automatically respond in low-grade ways that deactivate all forms of intelligence and have us unnecessarily settle, struggle, and suffer. You hear that? Right? It's like we have so many auto responses that we've learned. I was just coaching somebody this morning, and she's doing amazing work. She's really walking this talk. She's doing unbelievable work. And she just went on a trip to Atlanta with her girlfriend's you know, to go to concerts and wineries and stuff. And it was cool. And, and, and she left behind a wristband that was sent to her, which was the admission, the way to get into this big, huge fest, you know, music fest. And her initial response is, oh, shit, which is normal, normal, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but then she, you know, she was practicing doing the work and saying, well, you know, that doesn't actually have, first of all, it doesn't feel great. And it doesn't have me be able to create anything from this. Like I can't do anything amazing when I'm in the, oh, this sucks mode. And that was, uh, it's an auto response. Her, oh, damn it. Mm -hmm. She didn't choose that. You practice, you get good at it. And we've all been conditioned to believe that when we don't get what we want, that's bad. And we practice having lower grade responses so much that we don't even have to choose that anymore. It's automatic. And it doesn't have us be great, right? So she's practicing using some of the mantras, saying ain't bad, just is. The great neutralizer mantra. Like an acid for complaint, right? It's just ain't bad, just is. It just is. Then what we worked on, right? And this is like the, really the answer. What we worked on today is not only just getting out of complaint, stopping practicing having a problem with reality, which is what complaint is, which deactivates all forms of intelligence that will prohibit us from ever being amazing. But taking it up into curiosity, like, all right, this isn't what I wanted. I didn't want to forget my wristband that I paid for in advance. That's not what I wanted to do. But since this is my reality right now, I wonder what I can create from this that could be cool and amazing that I would have never thought of if not for having left the wristband. Mm -hmm. And that's brilliant because now you can go out into into this set of circumstances and a friend of hers she she told her and a friend of hers who was on the plane a few rows back or whatever taxed her goes oh that totally sucks it's just automatic right now and she's trying to be supportive right and this is this is really interesting right phenomenon right even like our loved ones who are attempting to be supportive of us reinforce low-grade interpretations of reality mm -hmm. trying to be em empathetic oh it sucks that totally oh this is nothing but bad and, and and she's doing the work and she said, well, unless it isn't, hmm. you know, so, you know, you get hurt. It's, it's you don't need to be happy about it. You don't need to be enthused yeah. about that. What, I, what I'm hearing is that enthusiasm for certain situations isn't necessarily the goal. It's to basically ain't bad, just is neutral, neutralizing. And then curiosity of, okay, what could what could be created from this set of circumstances? I, I am in no position to tell people how they should respond to life. Mm -hmm. That ain't my role. That would be stupid of me. But I'm here, I'm a messenger. That's it. All I do is deliver news. And, and what I got is the goods that I'm delivering is choice. Mm -hmm. With unbelievable amounts of training, enthusiasm could be a response, but it may not be what you want. Like, I don't know that it necessarily that I hope to or aspire to, or that I'm training towards being able to respond to an injury with enthusiasm, but I don't want to respond to it with misery. That I'm clear on. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a teacher, Byron Katie, been a big influence in my life. Have you heard of her? And How? I'm sure you've heard yeah, She still does workshops. So. Yeah, she, I, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. She does them down in Ojai. And this is her. This is one of her most her most famous book, Byron Katie. That's her name. Byron is her first name. Her last name's Katie. It's funny. And one of my favorite quotes of hers 
is that until you are able to respond to all of life with enthusiasm, your work is not done. Now that's her call. That's her call, right? So with training, what's possible is you can choose how to respond to anything. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, if I'm interested in creating excellence and joy, then I want to practice choosing to respond to life uh, with high grade states because that activates all forms of intelligence. You want to hear a story about a flat tire? Can I ask you a question real quick before I want to stay on this? Point. I'm sorry, I don't accept questions when I'm doing interviews. <laughs> hold, the, hold, hold the thought. So what I, what I just picked up, it was really nuanced is that you said that you're trying to create and operate from a state of intelligence. Mm -hmm. So is this about getting yourself to a state where you can actually create versus a negative state what just define like what happens in a negative state and why it's kind of harmful as a reason for choosing how you want to respond like where are where is creation exist from a state standpoint when you're in a state of stress or anger or fear or kind of um reactiveness you know wh what does that do to this intelligence that you're talking about well you know it depends what kind of intelligence we're talking about if i'm in a survival like if i'm being attacked Mm -hmm. Okay, then there are certain chemicals that are going to be really useful for me in that moment, right. like sure. right, cortisol and stuff like that. But that's extremely rare. <laughs> but we activate those when we don't need to. We activate fear all day long when we don't need to. Right. So that's in protect protection mode, especially if you got like a boss who's attacks, you know, that who, who uses fear as a, a, an attempt to motivate. You know, then we're living in this fear state, avoiding screwing up, which is you call in football, prevent defense, which will never lead to sustained excellence because you're just you're not in creativity mode. You're in protection. You're in like avoiding screwing up mode. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I'm in the low grade states, that's helpful for certain circumstances in life, like survival. All right. Uh, but when I want to create excellence, then I, I, I have to get good at uh, creating high grade states like enthusiasm, competence, confidence, right? Determination, certainty, yeah. expertise. Mm -hmm. And you, you wanna do an exercise before I tell a story? Sure. All right, this is a game changer. Okay, uh, this requires a little bit of participation for it to be nice. With everyone or just me? Yeah, everyone. All right. Everyone. So do they need I'll, to go off? Do they, they need to go off? Yet. Okay. I got this. So uh, do whatever you need to do, everybody, right now, inside yourself, silently inside yourself, in order to create the state of anxiety. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. We're just going to do it for a brief. Thank, thank you for this. <laughs> yeah, create anxiety inside. Just do whatever you got to do to create anxiety, just for a few moments here. Okay, that should be enough time. Um, most of us probably didn't even need that much. Uh, it was show of hands, who was able to do that? Okay, everyone. <laughs> okay, anyone wanna volunteer and tell me how you were able to do that? Like, what did you do in order to succeed? Listen to the language that I'm using, okay? What did, you just succeeded at a task. The task was to create anxiety and you won, you did it. So you 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 win. Right. So just tell me what your methodology was. How did you do it? How did you succeed in creating anxiety? Shortening my breath. Oh, that's such a great. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Carly. Anyone else? Bring up images of people in the family screaming, hollering. Okay. I mean, Julian, stay with me. Uh, what were the very first two words that you said in your response? Conjuring up images. Conjuring. Beautiful. Okay. Conjuring up. Now, what that means is you were choosing to fill your mind with a certain quality of thought content. Yeah. And it happened to be of unpleasant content that you determined to be unpleasant. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for that, Julian. Who else? For me, it was pretty easy. I just, I think about not hitting my number and then I automatically go to losing my house or, you know, right. uh, when right. it's a single mom. Yep. So that's automatically, with it, and it's still there. There you go. Okay. So, all right. Well, I got you. <laughs> so I, I seriously, I got your back. So um, you're going to love this, Tanya. So what you're, correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to put words in anybody's mouth here. 
in order to succeed at the task, which was to create the emotional state of anxiety, you chose to fill your mind with thought content that was specifically disastrous future stuff. Totally. It's always the the, the most fear that I have in, in life is that thing. So, so if you yeah. can remember, this might be a, a huge uh, moment for you, Tanya, and, and hopefully it is for everyone. Anxiety only ever comes from you choosing in the moment to think about the future in disastrous ways. The end. That's it. And that is great news. Now let's try something else. All right. Do whatever you got to do inside yourself to create the state of serenity. Go. Everyone. You know, it's funny when I do this exercise, almost unanimously, people say that it was easier to create anxiety than serenity. <laughs> and and we'll talk about why. It's not because we're dark entities. All right. Who is able to create serenity? Show of hands. Okay. Somebody who hasn't volunteered yet uh, to say anything. Uh, how, how did you succeed in doing that? Just a quick meditation. Like, what was it? Uh, close my eyes, breathe, focus on my breath, uh, zoned everything else out. Yeah, you know, I, I love that you're saying breath. Breath is, is so there's like two ways to accomplish this, and you're all nailing, you're nailing them both. That's beautiful. Okay, who else? I thought back to a time recently when I was very happy, felt like I belonged, and um, it was just a joyful time for me. So I use history, but don't permit it. for that again chose to fill your mind with unique thought content and that am i am i frozen you were for a second but you can repeat i use okay. history yeah. i heard you start to say i, that. I use history but don't permit history to use me so leslie what you did was you chose to selectively attend uh, a memory so that's thought content that's all a memory is is thought content so you chose to fill your mind with specific thought content that then resulted in serenity. Okay, let's do a couple more. <clears throat> create, do whatever you got to do inside yourself now uh, to create the state of ineptitude or incompetence. Go. Okay, show of hands, who was able to do it? And it shouldn't take long, right? We, 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 we can, okay, Carly, can you tell me how you did that? Yeah, negative self-talk. Oh, can you? Like allowing it to spiral. Yeah, yeah. Like uncertainty of self. Can you give an example of the? Just like the, you're not good enough, like you don't know how to yeah. do this. What's right. your, how do you have an opinion on this? Right. Just negative self-talk. Yep, there you go. So critical. You know, if we had like a, a device, like a, a really unique biofeedback device that could like give us our thought bubble content, our self-talk throughout the day, we'd be astonished. We'd be, we would be appalled. Like we spoke to our friends the way we speak to ourselves, we wouldn't have any. <laughs> so again, but you, again, Carly, um, you chose to think about certain stuff. You create, so you're sitting here, we're having, this is a nice chill dialogue. We're kicking it. You know, there's not a whole lot of stimulus going on, but yet you were able to create anxiety, then serenity, and then ineptitude. Out of thin air, right? Now we're gonna do one more. Uh, do whatever you need to do inside yourself in order to create the emotional state of best in class expertise. Go. All right, and I'm going to call on you this time. I thought about I, I thought about what I what's true and what I know, mm -hmm. which is practicing a lot of what we do and what you're talking about. I felt really good about mindset and and habits, and really just felt great about practicing what I preach. Yeah, 
So it was like the opposite of imposter syndrome. I thought about what I do well. I thought about, you see how, see, are you getting the pattern here? Mm -hmm. Either breathe or not breathe, or, and I can think about this, or I can think about that. I can think about, I can fill my mind with this thought or that thought. Now, so, so we just traveled back and forth along what you could call the emotional spectrum, the human emotional spectrum from the dark, right? Anxiety to the light, serenity from the dark and aptitude and incompetence to the light, world-class expertise. And nothing in the world changed in these moments that we've been doing this, except your thought content. Isn't that good damn news? Hmm. Well, let's practice choosing the amazing thoughts way more. This is a power. We have the bottom line of this, this exercise, and why I do it all the time, is to illustrate that we have the power and this, by the way, is a huge part of why I shifted out of being a licensed therapist and into coaching. It's speed. Speed. I'm not addicted to speed, but I am abhorrent. I can't stand wasting, like spending unnecessary time in suffering. We have the ability to access every single human emotional state that exists, and we can do it in a moment's time, anytime. I'm going to repeat that because it deserves it. We all have and always have had the ability to profoundly alter our states and to choose to think our way into any state, emotional state that exists. All we got to do is choose the thought that'll create it. So the question is, what state will serve you now? What state do you want? What stays, what emotional state is would be cool right now? What's what? What emotional state would uh, maximize the probability of you succeeding in the moment, or just feeling damn good? Because you don't like to succeed at lunch, but yet you could think your way into misery as you're having lunch. Why? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, that's almost the default of the mind. I feel like the mind goes towards the negative: fear, worry, anxiety, overwhelm. So this is more of an. That's because we've been taught to, bro. That's not how children are. Mm -hmm until we're educated about our limitations. I believe I'm convinced, you know, unless we're like hungry, separated from our moms or something like that, you know, we're in some pain, then we're experiencing the world with like bewilderment and awe and astonishment, fascination, curiosity, and enthusiasm with no, ex like no, causelessly. Cause we can, cause it's nice. Yeah. Cause it's an available option until we're educated to experience the world problematically. And that's what mental toughness training is about, is about reprogram our, reprogramming ourselves so we get back to our natural state, which is abundance, enthusiasm, creative genius. It's unlearning. Mm -hmm. so, so it's like the mind, the human mind doesn't automatically drift to the negative. It does with practice. So we want to practice reprogram. I, I wanted to tell you a story about the, let me tell you the flat tire story. Can I do that? Yeah, go for it. All right. So, you know, I've worked with some pretty badass coaches. These are two of them. These are the Steves in my world. This guy is named Steve Chandler. And uh, I, mean, you might, I mean, you got his stuff, right, Ian? You got, you know, yeah, you sent me some of his stuff, and I know Hardison on the right side. Right, right. And this Har Steve Hardison. So I've been coached by both these wizards. Now, this is a story about this guy, Steve Hardison, who lives right down the street here. And I have a question to ask you about him in a minute, but let's, right. let's do this story for oh, sure. Yeah, being a being question? Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, um, all right. So Steve does, Steve's an unusual person because he has trained his mind for decades and decades and he's amazing. And so one of the things that he does every summer is he picks a, a city in a neighboring state and we live in Arizona and he just, he loads his car up with presents, like books, like my books and other clients' books and a book that was written about him, which we'll talk about maybe in a second. Is this one? You got that, Ian? I do. Yeah. And uh, shirts, just stuff, you know, to, and, and he's going to give these things away to people he's never met, which is pretty damn cool. Mm -hmm. So he just goes and he, you know, goes alone. And he gets a place to stay. And then he just goes out and interfaces with the world. And he documents all this beautifully on social media. So it's just like this really uplifting, totally vibed up, spirited uh, reality TV for like a week. And so it's nice, right? So he he picked Santa Monica a couple of years ago. And, you know, it was beautiful for the week. And then he writes his final post at the end. the like top hat tour is what he called it. Complete 
many miracles co-created. Now I get to go home and can't wait to see you, my girlfriend, who happens to be my wife, Amy. I can't wait to get home and give you a hug and a kiss. And I'll see you in a few hours. Signing out. I'm like, that was nice. Then a few hours later, it's another post. And it goes, Top Hat Tour apparently not complete yet. There's more magic to be created. I have a flat tire in the middle of the desert in 120 degree heat, 120 miles out from uh, home, from Phoenix with no spare. Now, most people hear that. Now, most people wouldn't say it that way, right? With that, like, intonation or spirit. Uh, most people hear that and go, oh, that sucks. Right? But he's not telling the story like there's anything remotely negative. And he, and he goes on and he says, so now I get to go make someone's day. Mm -hmm. I get to call. He drives a little Porsche. And that's why there's no spare because there's no room. And he says, I get, to, I get to go call Porsche roadside assistance now and make whoever answers that phone, I get to make their day. How often do they get lovely, spirited, high vibed calls? So he gets to, he, this is how he's looking at this. I get to go do that. And he does. And he calls the woman answers and she's like, sir, are you on drugs? <laughs> and he's like, hell yeah, dopamine and serotonin, sister. you damn right I am. And she's like, this is so beautiful. She's like, golly, I wish I got more calls like this. You are making my day. And then he said, you know, so, all right, good. So what are we going to do? And she says, I'm sending Troy out with a flat bed. And he's going to pick you and your truck up and take you home. And Steve's like, oh, Troy, man. Woo. I'll tell you what, that boy's about to have the ride of his life. And he don't even know it yet. You know, as, you know, Steve, people fly in from all over the world to do two hours of coaching with him, which costs 10 grand. So this guy just got $10,000 worth of free coaching while he's getting paid to do his job. So he got to make people's day. Now, he posted all this, right? And I'm sharing a story just like I am with you now a lot because I love the story because what it does is it gives us an example of what could be a possibility for anyone who's willing to do the work. But I thought, you know, I wonder if I'm embellishing. You know, for convenience sake, maybe I'm filling in some gaps here conveniently for my own storytelling. So I I know the source, so I can go do some quick fact checking. So I call him up and I call him Admiral, which is a story for another day. He calls me Boatness, which is his nickname, which is also my the name of my document, my personal document. So I go, Admiral, is what you got, Boatness? And I said, I got a couple of questions for you, man. I'm telling you a flat tire story, but I want to make sure I'm telling it right. So I want to, I got two clarification questions. First, honest to God, man, honest to God, like seriously, how long did it take you after discovering that you have a flat tire in the middle, 120 miles out in 120 degree heat with no spare? How long did it take you to get to enthusiasm? And he goes, zero seconds, as if that was like an insult to even ask. And I go, Roger that. Second and final clarification question. How are you able to do that? And he said, years and years of practice. And I said, I'm telling the story perfectly. Thank you. Now, and I know what he means by that. And it's simply this. Practicing catching yourself when you're in complaint. Practicing. All, and we do it all day. Scientists say we complain once every 11 seconds. You heard it. Once every like silently, all these complaints occur within us, a state what? of a state of dis dash ease, yeah. having a problem with reality all the time. So the practice is, is to catch those complaints. And this is a real practice. This is like take this away, right? And, and, and experiment with this. Like catch yourself when you're feeling uncool, because that means you're having a problem with what is, and change your interpretation, change the thinking about that, mm -hmm. and choose to have the new thinking be your reality like real like you don't want to fake stuff i don't i'm not a, the, the 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 mantra fake it until you make it is not in my book and will never be because it's stupid have it be true now make it now make it your truth now because you can and this is catch own replace that is exactly right i want to catch myself when i'm feeling uncool and, and by the way let me just say this again there's nothing inappropriate like remotely about having about feeling bad we just do away the hell too much like way, way, way too much. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and it's unintelligent. I love sadness. I don't like suffering, but I like sadness. I don't like a lot of sadness. I like some. But yeah, so I'm catching myself when I'm feeling uncool. Right. And then I'm you say catch own and replace. So then I want to own it by saying I'm not feeling this way because of what's going on. Like I'm 
I'm feeling this way because of how I'm thinking about it right now. That's ownership. That's what creators do. That's what badasses do. That's what happy people do. That's what successful people do is they own their states. They don't, they don't act like victims of circumstance. They don't assign responsibility or credit to the outer world for how they're feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. So when I'm feeling uncool, I own it and go, I'm creating this with my thoughts right now. And if I, if I want, I can upgrade the hell out of my interpretations right now, which is why I wrote the book, man, because these are spoon fed replacement thoughts. These are some of the best replacement thoughts I've ever known of over the three decades I've been doing this work. Are those all your mantras? I'm curious about that. Or is it things you picked nah, up over the years? Or? I'm a thief, bro. I'm a thief. We all are thieves. Oh, I actually like to say I have influencers. <laughs> I think I made up a few of them. but they you, were aggregate, more... you aggregated everything that's worked and explained yeah. it yeah. and gave application for it. Yeah, a lot of them come up in the middle of coaching sessions. Just somebody will say something, client or me or both. Yeah, and so that's what they are. These are these are short phrases, right? That contain volumes of information. So when I can like get familiar with what the meaning of like ain't bad just is is, then I can use it to instantaneously go from negative to neutral, instantly. And if yeah. I want, I can go up from there and add and pile on and go. Well, this is the best damn thing that could happen. Or I create from everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's almost just constant reminders. You can tell yourself to catch yourself in the middle of any negative interpretations to neutralize or create from the situation. And it's um even even like being sick. We get, go back to that example. I think about when I'm sick, it creates space to appreciate what I have and the fact I'm not necessarily dead or you know, when I'm sick is You know what? That's high altitude training. Mm-hmm. There's a reason the Olympic athletes go to you know Colorado Springs to train. Altitude suffer. That ain't where they're competing. If they can thrive up there, and they could do it way better at, at ocean or at a sea level. So, uh, so when I'm sick, that's like high altitude training for me. If I can keep my attitude good, then whoo, yeah, that's nice. yeah. yeah that's you the one. Something, you said a word in which is very, uh, very important and useful. You, you said you called these reminders. And I put a dash between the E and the M, re-mind. So because that's what we're doing with this training is we're reprogramming our minds. Mm. So that like I'm working towards, like I ain't, I get a flat tire, I ain't pumped. Yeah. Not, not instantly, but you know what? I'm getting, hey, I'm getting closer, man. I swear I'm getting closer. It's nice. It's nice. Well, what one word kind of that re mind, like reprogram the mind. Another thing you say that is interesting is response ability, response ability. Yes. Yeah. The ability, that's what we were talking about when we were talking about the definition of mental toughness is the ability to respond. So that's response dash ability, the ability to respond, not react, respond. It's like that's choices in there. Reaction, there's no choice. Response is a choice, or it can become an auto response. Right. With practice. I, I think it's practice. also we're going to take questions at the end, Carly, when we do the Q&A. So for Tamber, Carly, um, for for the responsibility, right, it's our ability to respond and it's our responsibility to respond accordingly. Right. So it's it's almost an obligation to not react and to get pissed off and to yell. I know for me, like for me, a lot of work I did, like a lot brother and i'd say you you're you're a big part of this was triggers right and something we teach in the program i would get immensely triggered i love my wife to pieces but man she can be hard on me with you know cleanliness so if i drop some crumb, <laughs> if i drop some crumbs if i leave a cabinet open what I'm that language. Like, what that you, language. you should see our house is immaculate and, and she likes to keep it that way and we have two kids so That's she funny. calls me a big kid three boys that make a mess all the time so it's like the smallest little thing a drop of water splashes from the sink and it used to drive me nuts and i would react say what's the big deal and now it, it literally doesn't even phase me because of the work I've done, but it's not like I'm enthusiastic. I'm like, okay, clean it up. It's like an auto response to her, you know, to, to her coming, coming at me for that. And it's, it's, it's like, you're yeah, right. It's years of training. Cause before I would have said, this is your problem, not mine. What's the big deal. Stop tripping out about the crumb, you know, cause that's, but that, that was not her reality. Right. Yeah. And, 
in I think so it's that, a lot. and that's a big deal because this is your marriage, man. It's like who do you want to be and how you want to be there, right? Mm-hmm. So, so like the practice though is with all the little stuff all day, every day that we have a problem with, mm-hmm. like you know, my, like my pen running out of ink or like my coffee going cold while I'm in the middle of a call. I'm not going to get up and get more, you know, all the little crap. There's so much, man. There's so much, mm-hmm. so much. So I want to capitalize because every one of those is an opportunity for me to get in a repetition of upgrading my ability to respond well. Totally. I want to accumulate jillions of those reps. I use the mantra, no seconds off, right? The most mentally tough, happiest, most successful people choose to live in a perpetual state of self-inquiry, perpetually asking themselves questions like, how am I doing right now inside? How, what am I think? What kind of feeling am I thinking my way into right now? Is it smart? Am I, did I even choose it? Is it nice? Is it, is it, is it, it, you know, is it increasing the probability of me being amazing right now? Asking myself these questions all day so that when I get to an event that matters, it's not, not like, unlike a pen running out of damn ink or or coffee going cold or spilling something on your shirt, you know, then you have the ability to choose a response that serves you. Yeah. And it's constant. It's literally constant. It's throughout the day. Um, I, I, yeah, it's like picking your battles. I always tell my kids, is this a big deal or a little deal? We want to care and, and put the emphasis on the big deals versus the little deals. Well, there's, that's an interesting phrase, right? It's like pick your battles. And the thing is, is like, I don't want to, ha- I don't want to battle life ever. Yeah. Like I, I want to practice so diligently that I don't have battles. I'm not there, but I'm getting there and I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which is like, yeah. it's a practice. And the thing is, if it sounds exhausting, like saying no seconds off, it's not because if that sounds exhausting, you're not hearing it right. What's exhausting is spending so much of my life in a state of internal conflict. Mm-hmm. That's exhausting. Amen. Okay. So every second that I can get myself higher, elevate my state, then I'm real, I'm, I'm invigorated. It's not exhausting. It's invigorating. It's energizing. So I, I have two questions, brother, and then I want to open it up. I can't believe it's been 40 minutes. <laughs> it's flying by. Um, first question. You've coached some of the world's best athletes, some of the most successful business people in the world. If you think about things that they have in common and seeing patterns and behaviors and even ways of thinking that some of the world's elite across all industries have, what would you say those are? There's actually a, there's a lot. But uh, a few of them include uh, they do their work. They do the inner world work. What is that work? What we're talking about right now is is paying attention to, you know, becoming an emotional master by becoming a thought warrior. Mm -hmm. They use extreme discernment with what they permit into their minds. Mm. It makes sense because the higher up you get, the bigger your responsibilities and roles, the more stuff will come at you. So you really do have to do that. That's another thing is they get coaching. Mm -hmm. That is an unbelievable pattern of the greats is they get coaching, you know, to to massively accelerate the rate at which they grow. Mm -hmm. You know, they get with somebody who's not afraid to call them out lovingly, but unapologetically, you know, to show the blind spots. Even the best of the best, right? The they best. they are admitting. Not, so is uh, it, yeah, absolutely the is best. That a, is that a humility? Is that a humility thing? No, I think it's a hunger thing. Mm. It's like, yo, I'm so committed to excellence. I right, let's let's get it. Come on, show me where I'm sucking. Hurry up and do it too. I love that it's a hunger thing. If yeah. you're hungry and you want to do better, you pay for help. That that I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. I pay, I, you have no idea how much money I have paid this damn guy that's yelling, and scream, and spit on me. <laughs> I paid 50 grand this year. Um, it's been my biggest year in coaching myself and everyone here is paying um, at least nine grand to be here. So it's, it's a, there you go. It, it's nice. a, and I tell them it's the best thing you do. We just talked about this yesterday, the power of mentorship and having somebody to guide yeah. you who's been there. So I love that. Um, anything else that you kind of see? Yeah, they don't you, get, yes, absolutely. This, this is huge. So you mentioned, so one of the billionaires that I coached was, his name is Mike Ahern. And he was the uh, CEO of a company called First Solar Electric. Mm. And um, he, when he took over the CEO role, he hired me to coach him 
and he did it in the fishbowl in their offices. So everyone would see me coaching him. And they're all like, who's that guy? Why does he keep coming here this week? What's they doing? And then he, you know, they're like, oh, that's his coach. And I'm like, what? He's getting co- What? He's getting coached. So then he shared, then I, he had me coach other people. But that's not even the thing. Because the, the, we already talked about that is getting coached. But the thing that he did, which is that, which the real winners do, is they don't get tripped up by the uh, absence of uh, clarity on how they're going to pull off their miracles. They get all in on the fact that they're going to create the miracles even before they have any clue on how. How is the biggest obstacle that I have witnessed people coming up against in my entire career. Mm. Uh, Because we've been convinced to believe I need to know how. It's like going to a movie. It's like, I don't don't tell me how it ends. I, that's like, that's the entertainment value for God's sake. You know, and when I get committed to the how, and you'll see this in the in the book, it's the how is in the what. Yep, yep. You know, and the story about my, my nephew Benny and the car keys is like inherent within our desires or the mechanics for, for their own fulfillment. So what the all the greats do is they decide, decide, not set goals, they decide. And Ian, I sent you the all in audio program, which I invite you to share with everybody here. And that is, all my, you know, 60 minutes of me elaborating upon the distinction between a goal and a decision and the, the huge difference. And so what these great leaders do and the most successful people is they decide that in advance of knowing how they get all in. You're getting me fired up. Here. I was already fired up. But like you just talked about this yesterday. And now you're going to give your audio program to all the members here of on top your sales potential. So thank you for that. This is so much wisdom in the audio program. I've taken it myself. I, I, I want to just dive into this thing. So you're all in, you are committed, you know what you want. And then the mechanics reveal themselves. The universe collaborates to help you. The law of attraction brings you what you need to make it happen. I mean, how does this all work? It seems a little bit. Yeah, I stay away from abstract. <laughs> the metaphysical but i'm weak sauce but what i love physics (laughs) you know and it's like and i also love evidence right like evidence that when i move towards a mission with um all in this or knowing this Mm -hmm. infinite commitment the action that i take is so qualitatively masterful it's it's more immediate it's bold and it's intelligent that i activate what i call the mechanics that are inherent within your desires it's just shit like it happens things happen you have ideas you know you, you have ideas that you would never have had you, you see solutions there's a great video on my youtube page i was actually going to salesforce i don't know if you ever saw this one Ian. it's uh called how to capitalize or how to benefit from enthusiasm mm-hmm. and i'm not, I'm not going to tell it now because it's too long but it's like you know when i got like my flight was delayed flight was delayed flight was delayed they're flying me out the same day as a talk which is really I watched yeah, it. okay. So yeah. So then when they canceled the flight and everybody's going ballistic, I had that be a reminder of how not to be. And I chose enthusiasm and was the only person on the plane that created not only a solution, but a miraculous one. And a series of miraculous events ensued because of that shift in thinking. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? You, ambulance? Okay. No, it's a really, really loud. So right what there. I'm hearing is when you're fully, infinitely committed, you get more creative, you get more ideas, you get more resourceful, you get more downloads, essentially, on what you need to do to, to get there and what yeah. how, how it could actually you know, Another one is, is this one. I don't know if you see me drinking out of this mug, but vibe up. That's a, a really intelligent thing to do because when you're operating from high vibes, and this I, I'm talking science here, this is measurable. We're constantly either polluting or purifying the environment around us with our vibes and our thoughts create our vibe. And, you know, people even say it. it's like, I get a bad vibe from that cat, from that dude. You know, oh, she's got such a nice vibe. And they think they're being metaphorical, but they're not. They're actually being very literal. Mm-hmm. And when I vibe up, it's unbelievable how much assistance I get from the world. It's so true, man. I, 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 yeah, I, I'm seeing this right now. Literally in the past three days, I've decided to made a decision that I was going to bring in outside people to enhance the quality of this program, experts like you. And within three days, three people appeared to help me on that mission. It just happened. And and I'm not kidding. And I say it's God, right? Helping yeah, people sure. who want to do good or decide, right? That's my faith belief. But you're, you're kind of putting it conceptually too, where you get in this place where you're like, yes, this is the, the vision. This is what I want. And therefore, 
I'm excited and enthused about it. And now I'm going to go make things happen. And people are going to support me when they see that energetic and that vibe that I'm bringing. And they're going to want to get behind me to help out, like you being here for free to help our clients. I mean, that's a perfect example. And, 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 and then, so I get all in, right? I get enthused. I get infinitely committed. I take immediate, bold, masterful action. And even then stuff doesn't go the way I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. So then the question is how you'd be then the same. Yeah. You go, oh, wow. I didn't see that coming. All right. Let's create from this. I create from, I create from everything. All right. So let's create from this. Didn't see. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Let me tell you a tiny story uh, about um, Herbie Hancock and Miles Davis. Okay. Miles Davis is playing a, an outside concert in Stuttgart, Germany many years ago. And Herbie Hancock happened to be in Germany at the time. Miles heard about that and, and called up, contacted Herbie and said, yo, man, you want to jam with me on stage? And, and I'm like, that's like an invitation from God. So like, Herbie, yeah. Right. So Herbie, and if you don't know who Herbie Hancock is, he's a really famous um, jazzy piano or keyboardist. And of course, Miles Davis is arguably the greatest trumpeter. So uh, they're playing right on stage and Herbie, and this is actually on YouTube. You can just look up Herbie Hancock, Miles Davis, like medicine, mistake medicine thing. Uh, he played the wrong key, uh, key, chord, chord. Herbie did. He's like the wrongest chord, like the wrongest and he plays it. He's like, Ugh. and he's like looking over at Miles, and Miles paused for like maybe a second, and then Miles went, "Oh, all right, then I just mm -hmm. did not. Let's go there then." And then he created with it. So Herbie was like, "Oh God," and Miles was like, "Oh nice," and he worked with it. And then they created, they went all outside, you know, how jazz gets funky, like, where are they even going? And then they brought it back and it was nice. Mm -hmm. So he created like medicine out of the poison, right? And that's because of his mastery. And that's what we're working towards here, right? Is to be able to create beauty, to create magic, to create excellence out of everything, even things that people are convinced are a tragic mistake. Mm -hmm. My last question, and then I want to open it up to the group, is you talk about this state, create the state, don't wait. Steve Hardison wrote a whole book on being. He right? didn't write it. He didn't write it. His wife wrote it. She didn't either. <laughs> I thought she wrote it. Well, Alan D. Thompson wrote it and then she edited it. Ah, I got it. So, so, she edited so it. Alan D. Thompson wrote it and then she rewrote it. I got it. So she gets the bigger, the bigger font. That's what I get confused. So for, for <laughs> as she should. Uh, she for, should. For, I mean, she spent, she's, oh, yeah. Um, for the, just describe, like, I always talk about what we're doing. Steve really dives into who we are being, which ultimately determines, you know, the results we get. Can you just elaborate on what that means, who we are being, and what is the optimal way to be in order to maximize your chances of well, getting- it's to be who you want to be, who you choose to be, okay? So I, I referenced this earlier just because I was using, like just saying, telling the story, right? He calls me boatness. But this is my personal document and it's laminated. You don't need to re even be able to see what it says. I could recite some of it. And this book, this is, I, I spent weeks and weeks creating this. This is who I choose to be. This is a document that that illustrates who I choose to be, right? And I, re, and I read this, I don't read it, well, I read it, but I re, it's memorized. So I recite it to myself every day. It's on my bathroom mirror. It's on my kitchen table. It sits right here on my desk and nothing ever gets put on top of it. Even though it's laminated, nobody puts anything on top of this sacred document, right? Mm -hmm. And I use it to re-mind myself every day who I want to be because who I be governs what I create in the world. Right. So I use my words to create my world. I am an expression of divine grace in human form. What could ever be wrong with my truth? I am that this is perfect and everything's unfolding exactly as it should. Nothing needs to be anything other than exactly what it is. My soul and I reside and abide in the realm of uncertainty. And I love that. I co-create with God. I am the entire universe pretending to be human. And it goes on and on and on. I don't say it that fast. I'm just doing it for a time's sake here. Right. And that's me speaking. I do it way slower than that. And I feel what I mean by every one of those sentences. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing is I'm speaking my way into that truth. One of my I am's is I am peace. Now, is CD always peaceful? No. But I am more peaceful by declaring that I am. I don't say I'm peaceful. I say I am peace. I am peace. And I have it be true now, which is why I don't believe in the fake until you make it, because we don't need to waste time. I have it be true now. I am peace. And in this moment, I am it. I will forget that. Okay. But guess what? The more I practice this being, the less I forget. 
So the practice is to remind yourself who you need to be. You want to be. Who you want to be. First thing in the morning, you read it, you affirm yeah. it. And I have it here all day. It's in my eyes. It's wherever it's where I put it wherever I go. It's in my car and my wallet too. Mm. You know, so that like I'm constantly seeing it. And it's a re-dash minder of who am I choosing to be? Because the, when I'm being that guy, oh my God, all I do is create magic. Yeah. Makes so I encourage everybody to take some time. This is some real sacred time. And write down who are you? What who do you want to be? Who's your ideal you? Yeah. I have I have this that I print. It's on my bathroom. I just printed another go. copy, but it's just very similar. It's I am a kind, loving, humble servant of God's will, blessing and inspiring the lives of my family and all those I encounter with presence, joy, and love. I'm a living testimony to the power of God, glorifying him through my example. It can't get better than this very moment. And that one came from your daily dose, brother. It can't get better than this very moment, reminding me to appreciate the present and the now. So That's um, beautiful, brother. So see, when you do that, right, what you're, you're, you're creating that reality for yourself. You are being that guy. And the more you practice that, then the more permanently you become that. Yes. And that's what being is about. So we get to choose who we be and how we be governs. I love it. And it's all, it might sound like, you know, mumbo jumbo, but it works. If you're going to put yourself in a state fund. I hope it doesn't sound like mumbo jumbo. I hope For, for skeptics out there, for people that don't yeah. necessarily well, buy into this, Right. Oh, like, oh, yeah. You're not talking about here. No, <laughs> not. Hey, I wouldn't have brought you on right, otherwise. Right, 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 I, right, right, people right. are here because they believe it. But again, you you have the ability to decide how you want to be, how you choose to react, and that is what mental toughness is, and that will determine your level of success. Plain and simple. You can complain, you can blame, you can fear, or you can say, "This is what it is, and I'm going to show up my best because that's who I yeah. am, and this mm -hmm. is just an opportunity to showcase positive." qualities so let's take um some questions uh just to be mindful of time chris do you have a hard stop in five or no i do not have this is my I, last appointment. i don't either so i can stay longer for questions because i i went a yeah, i'll stick around if you want for sure cool. um mikhail you're up first my friend yeah so thank you chris for you know sharing with the group um so my question is around you know your coaching or with as you call them the greats right and my question is specifically around, you know, what you said about they don't have goals, they decide. And I'm curious when they're when they're dealing with deadlines, that's that's one thing that I'm struggling with. Right. Do they tend to, you know, because I, I mean, are deadlines a huge part of those decisions? And if so, um, you know, do they tend to really try to condense them and make them, you know, really constricted? <laughs> I mean, how do you coach around the deadline, right? The timing of the execution. Yeah. So I use the term timeline, right? And uh, absolutely. And there's tons of research on how m more frequently people achieve their desires when they put timestamps, right? Uh, and also how faster. Now, I want to operate from the assumption, I want to always be operating from the assumption that I'm putting unnecessary time between myself and my desire. And that I can create what I want faster than I'm believing in this moment. I'm happy to be wrong. But that's the way I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong the other way, making false assumptions about how long it's going to take, which is all, what we've all been conditioned to believe. Again, I, I said earlier, I'm not addicted to speed. But what I, can, what I really don't have any time for is unnecessary time being put in between me and the creation of excellence. I am convinced that we are all designed to create excellence. I am convinced of that. And, I, you know, I met a woman recently. I just interviewed her, actually, for my podcast. Her name is Marissa Peer, and she is like the premier therapist or hypnotherapist or both in the UK. And she invented a form of therapy called rapid transformational therapy, which is why I became so interested in her. And I asked her, can you, you say, you mean like healing people fast, fixing like serious stuff fast? And she says, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what about trauma? She goes, oh, yeah. I'm like, really? You know, so it's like, I want to operate from the assumption that, you know, we, we have picked up false beliefs along the way, all right, along the course of our lives that have, would have us, um, well, one of them is that this is going to take time or I'm not ready, you know? So yes is the answer to the timeline question. And, you know, and it's definitely something, a habit that the, the grades get into is assuming that everything can be created faster even in the even in the face of evidence suggesting otherwise and when it doesn't work and it doesn't go as a, as planned i stay in the all-in state 
I go, all right, that wasn't the solution. Let's get it. Mikhail, when you're when you're asking about you struggling with timelines, I'm just curious, like specifically, is there uh Yeah, yeah. So I mean I wanna, you know, A, make, you know, seven figures and then B get promoted to a, a director, a di- district director, uh, and move to New York, you know. And I gave myself three years, but I think that I'm I'm um making that too long, right? I think I could probably do it in two. And so that's what I'm thinking about, right? And so I, I've I heard what I needed to hear. So okay, so listen to the all in audio program with one thing in mind, Mikhail. Is that I pronounce your name properly? Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, so please listen to that uh when you get it with the one thing in mind, which is I am creating seven figures and everything else that followed that rapidly. And, and don't have that be a damn goal. Have that be a damn decision. Like I mean a decision. Like are you gonna have dinner tonight? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm sure. Infinitely certain. Yes, certain. Take that same certainty into this decision. Seven figures. Then you change, man. I'm I'm gonna drop as a reward for everybody who is on this right now. I'm gonna drop in the chat of the all in audio program. It's about 60 minutes of just brilliance on how to get to all in, how to stay there, how to maintain that position what you can create from there so um this will not be on youtube it will not be shared but for anyone in the chat um in the program you can grab it now and uh that's kind of a thank you for being live let's uh um julian tanver his hand up before you from earlier so i'm going to take him first and then we'll go to to julian so my bad julian <laughs> um but chris great to meet you i've been a been a long time fan um I love the exercise that you did at the beginning, uh, you know, with getting us to do our thoughts and experiencing different feelings as a result of that. But how do you, how do you delineate, you know, something like thinking your way out of a situation from practicality and from reality? As an example, um, you know, a couple of months ago, I was struggling. I had about two, three weeks where maybe I wasn't performing well. And, you know, pr- practicality while speaking practically speaking. And I was like, maybe I'm not as good as this as I thought it was. And I need to brush up on some skills um, and do that versus, you know, trying to convince myself that I am good. So I guess, how do you separate those two things? So, you know, that's, I, that is a brilliant question. So thank you for it. First of all, sometimes when people aren't really hearing, picking up what I'm throwing down and only kind of half getting, I'm not saying that's you, I'm saying that this is just my answer to your question. And they say, oh, so you want us to look at life through rose-colored glasses. And I just about throw up in my mouth when they say that. And I say, no, it's the opposite of that. I'm saying, so here, these are called distortion glasses, we'll call them, right? Right? Just for the sake of the story. So here I am experiencing life opportunistically, right? Enthusiastically. Also cool with what happens. My definition of a realist is a person that can work with everything that's real and do it rapidly. So I take, and I, so nothing needs to be avoided. I, I want all the, the more data, the better. I'm sucking. Okay, great. Let's go learn why. But then I get hand over time. I am encouraged strongly to put on these distortion glasses. Oh my God, problems. Holy shit. Oh, this is bad. Oh, that I'm under that I'm underperforming is a serious problem. I'm saying suggest we take those distortion glasses right the hell off, get back to experiencing reality as it is, and be able to work with stuff. There's a phrase which is the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist is sure it'll go away. Whereas the realist is like, it's wrong with you people, sets their sails and hauls ass across the sea. All right. So I want to get to two questions as fast as possible when I ain't get what I want. One, what's the learning in this? And get greedy and go get that. All right. And two, what can I create out of this that I wouldn't have been able to even think of if it won't for this? I don't look, ex- experts, right? The masters, they don't look at not getting what you want as failure. Failure does not exist in the expert's world. There are only results and I create from them all. I hope that's helpful, man. That is, thank you so much, Chris. Amen. Sorry, sorry, I'm muted. Let's go ahead and take uh, Julian as the um, next question. Julian, go ahead. Hey, Chris, nice to meet you. I'm Julian, I work at Oracle. I wanted to ask you along the lines of when you're coaching these top athletes and these top performers, these top billionaires, what are some of the main reasons why these people fail at both their goals and their mindset? That they're human. 
you know, if these are people that are killing it. So again, like I was just saying to Tamvir is that they don't fail. Okay. They don't get, <laughs> failure is a construct. It's just a, it's a, it's a construct or an idea as a way of referring to a set of circumstances when you didn't get what you want. I, there's no failure in my world. There's no failure in my world. They're just shitloads of attempts and all kinds of outcomes. And I crave from them all. Sometimes I get what I want. Sometimes I don't. So really, I, I kind of redirect the question and, and tell you they don't have failure in the world. They just have results, right? So when they don't get what they want, they get curious. They get really curious, and in, but they get curious in an enthused way. Like, oh, you know, it's like Thomas Edison, you know, when he got inv uh, interviewed after the light bulb, after he you know, finally um, invented the light bulb. And the, the interviewer, the media person said, how do you feel about having failed so many times in your attempts? And he goes, well, I'm sorry. What? I said, yeah, but you know, like fail? Like, he goes, no, every one of those had me know that ain't the way. And it, it was all it was all data that had me get to the right the solution. And you're welcome for your light bulb, by the way. Certainly. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you. Next question comes from Leslie Adams. Go ahead, Leslie. Hey, Chris. Um, thank you so much. I, I'm kind of fangirling. I read your book every morning with coffee and a couple other devotionals. So really, really happy to see you here. Um, and thank you for the uh, the audio gift. So I'm looking forward to digging into that. During so I I have a lot of years of undoing and I'm working on it right like the negative like when you said you wouldn't talk to another person the way you talk to yourself that is so true I see it I don't, I've never been a man so I can't speak to it but with women like we just tear ourselves down you know mm -hmm. and um so I'm getting it's getting a lot better right but it it's a habit of lots of years and um and it and it will I mean it it will be um. I don't know, improved or overcome. That's the word. Reverse. Reverse. Thank you. But like during the day, what's a way you can, when you catch yourself, I've got sticky notes with your expressions and your, your sayings up, you know, on my computer screen and so on. What's a tangible way to catch yourself and like reset, 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 almost like cognitive behavioral yeah. therapy or something. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's, there's several things. One, and they're fail safe. Okay. One is uh, what Ian mentioned earlier is the catch on and replace. And it is as simple as this. And don't, please don't try to complicate it because it doesn't need to be. Right. Everybody tries to complicate things. It's like, let it be simple and profound. Uh, is to catch when to heighten your awareness to your moods throughout the day. Like live in a perpetual state of self, uh, self inquiry where you go, how am I feeling now? What kind of, what kind of state or mood am I thinking my way into right now? What kind of state am I creating with my thoughts in this moment? All right. And then own it. Say, all right, you know, I'm, if it's an unpleasant, well, whatever the state is, I'm creating it. It's not coming from the outer world. And if I want to change it, then I can. I could use a mantra. Or I could do anything, breathe. Well, I could just change the, you know, the content of my mind. So that's one practice. Another is, I don't know if I did it during this call, but I'm doing it all day long. I, I call it watch your mouth. Our yeah, well, really, it's just playful, but it's like watch what comes out of your mouth. Our language is a is a dead giveaway for our thoughts. It's like the, our language is a fingerprint of our thinking. Mm -hmm. So my language is just a phenomenal way for me to be able to identify these sneaky thoughts, right? They're invisible stuff. So if I listen to my language, I listen to what I say. You you may yeah, you'll you'll hear me if you listen to me long enough. Go, you know what? Delete that. That was nonsense. I don't even agree with that crap. And I'll say it over. So I'm always doing that. Right. I'll catch myself in the middle of a sentence. So I'm watching my mouth. I'm being in the inquiry. Do I even agree with what this is? So watching my language. Also, non-judgmentally paying attention to other people's victim language and using it non-judgmentally as a reminder, redesminder for you on how you want to take ownership of how you're creating your own life. Love it. Thank awesome. You. I think Tanya is asking if we can have another question. I think it's okay. Chris, you tell me when you're ready. I, I, I told you, man, I'm good. Okay, I'm, said, I'm, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying just hanging out with you. So uh, go ahead, Tanya, you can uh, you can go next. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering how uh, impactful is the energy of those around you um, when you're trying to stay at a high frequency, like, um, and, you know, just pot potentially that getting in your way if it's a spouse or 
um, just, you know, being a product of your environment and the people that you're connected to, like how impactful is that in, in your experience? <laughs> Profoundly. I'm very, very, very selective with who I spend my time with. I'm also very selective with what I permit. I don't watch the news. Right? I'm really selective. I like to be informed. Uh, and I'm extremely, you know, the news is just so jacked because it's like, you know, 99.9. You know, this is insulting even that certain news shows they put they wait till the very end to say some happy story. Like, are you, are you kidding me right now? Like, that's it? You know, so we're just being bombarded with 99 stories of misery and chaos and horror. And then, we're, you know, then but that's having the effect of having us believe that that's how reality is. And that's absolutely not correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I on social media, I, I only follow um, people and and um, entities, mm -hmm. pages that inspire me. So, Tanya, the influence is profound. So use discernment. And now, but you're talking about a spouse. So, so now it gets tricky. Like if you, like for people that are in relationships with people that tend to choose a lot of negativity, that's difficult. And the best, you know, say, well, I've still, want to, I love this person deeply and I want to stay in this relationship. I just can't stand how much they complain. All right. Well, your best bet is to model the alternative. Yeah. Is be like like Gandhi said, be the change. Like mass, don't preach, just walk it. Walk it. And then, and then, then after that, on them. that's what happened. Well, it may or may not, but 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 that's the most powerful way that people learn is through modeling, watching people they care about do things, and then they start to imitate them if it's nice, right? Yeah. But if they're really deeply still attached to their negativity, which a lot of people are, then we could maybe consider co-creating some powerful agreements to say, I want to upgrade. I love you so much. And I love this relationship, and I'm always interested in making it even better than it already is. And I got an idea. I would love to co-create some agreements uh, or uh, an, an agreement between us on how we're practicing interpreting life. And you can have a conversation on that, right? Because a lot of relationships get real toxic because they have expectations. You know what, Ian? I'm going to send you some goodies, bro. Do you have expectation versus agreement, Ian? From Chandler, I don't unless you send it to me. Unless it was, I, I will. I'll send it to you in a minute. Cool. I don't think I have it. Yeah. So yeah. So then I would. You know, agreements are profound, and I, I'm gonna. I'm definitely. I want to send you this 30 minute audio program by my former coach Steve Chandler. Uh, expect. I'm gonna actually just put it here in the chat right now. Is this for everyone? It's absolutely for everybody, and he gave it to me. And he gave me permission to share with everybody. Everyone on the call just now, uh, Chris charges a thousand bucks, I think, for the audio program that he's giving you guys. So let's all graciously thank him for this gift. For our there you go. It's in. It's uh, expectation versus agreement. I that is gold right there, people. That's gold. Okay, please listen to it and then experiment with co-creating powerful, beautiful agreements. Co-creating them with um with everybody with people that report to you with uh, your friends with uh, i made a great you know i made agreements a friend of mine he's you know he, he's cool he's funny he's a super duper crazed philly fan like me and he was a chronic complainer and i just said i mean we gotta need to make an agreement if we're going to continue to relate this friendship bro because i just can't even and he really appreciated that. And he, to the point where he last week was over here and there's lots of people in this house is where people gather for games and people were saying, yo, he's different. Mm -hmm. He's different. He had a bad vibe. He's got a good vibe. It's nice. And and it came from the co-creation of an agreement. So you called him out and said, we have to agree on the. I, I think I, yeah, I guess you could say called him out. I just said, this isn't working for me. Yeah. All right. Our, our, our conversations are like 90% complaining and even complaining about people that are friends. I'm like, this isn't the way I want to be, man. So this ain't going to work for me. If we're going to I love you, man. If we're going to continue to spend time together, though, we can't be doing this. I'm sure he appreciated that. He did. He, I, that, I was taking a risk because he could have said, just go pound sand, Holmes. Who the hell do you think you are? Yeah. You know, but he but he it was beautiful, actually. But you're coming from a place of loving and caring and wanting to help him. So if right, you that, the framing. Yes, sir. The framing. Yeah, it wasn't like, bro, you're messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're jacked. 
and this bullshit. No, I didn't come like that. I, I brought like, you know, man, I love our time. I love you. Uh, uh, and this ain't going to work for me like this. Makes sense. My last question. I want to, I want to let, I don't see any other questions in the, in the chat right now, but um, my last question is what is your mantra that you find yourself using the most, not your favorite mantra, but the one that you use the most when you, when you look at all of them. Well, I mean, I use the beat. This isn't really a mantra. It's the best damn day in my life. I use that every morning. So without fail, without fail. Uh, I, I think create the state don't. Well, that's actually my favorite. The one that I use the most. This is the best damn thing could happen. Ah, uh, I like it. Yeah. yeah as, as, a, as the fastest replay, like, because, you know, <laughs> well, you know, I had like five different utilities in my head things break in a week before i was going off to a trip you know my air conditioner leaked out into my carpets and then the shower backed up the two sinks in the master backed up and then and then the next day the hot water heater popped just exploded you know and i'm like i walk out and i went a little bit postal a little bit postal when i when and i'm like and about and i'm so happy about this this is me bragging it took about, honest to God, maybe 10 seconds before I went, it's the best damn thing. And, and it ain't a euphemism. It's me doing the work. It's me so, turning it around. What happened? It's the best damn thing. Then what happened from that? How did you create um, excellence from, from that state of this, this story? I have the story now. I share the story. Mm. You know, so I, mean, I got a new water heater. Who gives a shit? I mean, I got a new water, but that, that, that ain't the thing. No, I, I love that. I love, I love that. The story is the best thing that could have happened. It's the story that I got to share with people now. So I'm not staying in a state of internal conflict or just dash ease, mm -hmm. right? Having a problem with reality. It's a water heater that brought me a lot of heated water for years. I'm grateful for it. They don't last forever. So, you know, plus I'm also grateful that I, actually I had a home warranty, but I, that is what had me discover I failed to renew it. <laughs> best yeah. damn thing could have happened. <laughs> I, I have, um, for anyone who, who is curious. I, I have a whole interview I did with Chris on getting to an all in state, but I'll leave everyone with a story, the real story that, um, that happened to me. Uh, I, I was, this is right after I talked to you three, three years ago. Um, I just had a baby gotten sober and kind of had all these blessings. And, and then I come back to Salesforce from paternity leave and I'm staring at a million dollar quota. And I found myself wanting to just, you know, cut the cord, go coach, and what I realized was I was afraid of missing my number. And then I still had this attachment to my worth of, hey, if I don't hit my number when I get back, I'm going to um, not be credible as a coach, as a sales coach, because I, I didn't you know, hit my number. Who's going to pay me for coaching? And once I realized that I was afraid, and here I was on January 31st, I was about to give a keynote talk called You Are Not Your Number. <laughs> and it's and I'd already signed up for that. And so it was October. Um, it was the sales hacker um SKO. And I was giving that talk called You Are Not Your Number, Finding Your Worth Outside of Your, you know, outside of your performance. And I was gonna talk about addiction recovery and saving my marriage and all the shit. And then I'm like, here I am, here yeah. I am afraid. So I said, no matter what happens, I'm going to have a story to tell. If I hit my number, it's gonna be a story about focus and resilience and you know, all in and what that can do for your business selling a million bucks in 12 weeks. And if I don't, it'll be, Hey, you know what? I'm still okay. Look at all these things, but no matter what happens, I will have a story to tell yep. Not that was how, that was what got me through that period because that was like, okay, I'm, I'm finally facing my own fear. And it was, it was beautiful. Just that whole concept of it'll be a story to tell. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the worst case scenario is that I create, a story that I get to share to empower people. Yeah, that's right. And, and I don't even care, by the way. Like I'll say, this is the best damn thing could have happened. And people go, "How?" And I'll say, "I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I don't know yet, and I might never know. I don't care." I tell you, what I can assure you of is that I'm not having a problem with this anymore. Yeah. The one that I really like is every set of circumstances can be created from if if viewed masterfully. Right. Right. So the abbreviation for that is I create from all things. Yeah. I create from everything. So you may not know how 
or what's going to happen after you're sick or injured or miss quota or whatever. But the key is that you're creating something from those circumstances. You miss your number a year, two years, three years in a row. You create a new version of yourself who's able to go out and overcome. Creating all day. We're, all, we're, we're always creating something. Mm -hmm. We could be creating anger. We could be creating conflict. We can be creating dis-ease, right? Like physically and emotionally. We're always creating. So the question is, what do I want to create? Like, so I, when I say, I, you know, what do I want to create from this? The assumption is, what what amazingness do I want to create from this? Yeah. Right? And we get to create from everything. There's a mantra, a long mantra that I came up with after I took this magical trip to the Greek islands, where I accepted the challenge from my mom, who's an intrepid world traveler. She's lived all over the world. She's a total badass. And she said, go to the Greek islands. Because I was at an event in Sardinia, Italy, for on longevity. And I'm like, I wish I'd do it after that. And she goes, I'll tell you exactly what you're doing. You're getting rid of your, you're just going to take a minimal carry on small as possible. And you're going Island hopping alone in the Greek Isles with no itinerary, no reservations. I said, Oh, this is why I hang with you, mama. This is why I hang with you. So, uh, and it was a magical week. Uh, all I brought was a mega high vibe and a tiny carry on and uh, created unbelievable amounts of magic. So the mantra I came up with after that experience was this magic is all there is it is the constant in this equation that we call life the variable is my ability to slow down enough and vibe high enough so that i can co-create with it co-create with it co-create magic there's no moments there where uh, none no moments where magic can't be co-created by you with life but we will not do it when we're having a problem with life mm. It is. It, it feels it feels like the law of attraction. It feels like miracles. It feels like things coming together as a result of how you're being, how you're vibing, how you're interpreting. It's a flow state, man. It's like, you know, when I was working with athletes, this is the zone, dude. It's just the zone, man. And that's our normal. Mm -hmm. That's normal. That's why everybody feels so right when they're performing at peak. Like that, that felt like easy. Can it always be that, please? Like, yeah, well, that's you being normal. That's you working with life. I, I'm going to... Gosh, I, I, I can't get enough of this content, but I'm looking at someone, I'm not going to name names, but I'm looking at someone right now in the Zoom and I spent some time with him at the immersion. I just, I, I was just hosting and he was telling me he's he's not feeling it and he hasn't been feeling it for some time. It's just that inner feeling of like deep drive or kind of like in this, it's the opposite of being in flow in the zone, right? It's just like, just you're going through the motion, but you don't feel that fire burning from within. Um, I, I just being called to ask, what would you say to people who are in those that state where they're not? Well, if you, I would ask, say, are you waiting for something in the world to be different before you feel amazing? And if so, stop it. Create like, well, how would you love to feel right now? I'd ask. And then I would take them through the exercise and say, all right, if you got to create that state right now, even for just 17 seconds, go tell me when you're done. And then they say, I'm done. I said, you did it. And I said, yeah. So please do that more. Mm. Like way more. Stop. We've been conditioned to wait for shit in the world to change before we feel the way we want to feel. Let's flip that around. Create the state. Don't wait. Create the state. Start with state. So I'm not feeling it. I don't know what the it is. I would want to know what's the it. Is it enthusiasm, excitement, fire? Yeah. So, so, know, stop, so that's it. So you create it now and create it again and again. Create it 78 times be before you go to sleep hmm. and have that become a habit. Create the state. Just alter your state and everything changes. Lao Tzu, the ancient Chinese philosopher said it. Get your head right. Everything else falls into place. Buddha said it too. The, the, your life unfolds according to the way that you think and the way you think governs how you feel so stop waiting the, it's great news right if you ain't feeling it the great damn news about that is because you ain't thinking it hmm. and you are the governor of your thoughts and that is the most beautiful thing ever thank god for that it's so simple uh, isn't that nice it ain't easy. <laughs> it's simple. Yeah, well, no, no, I don't. I don't agree with you, but brother. All due respect. Nope. It is simple, and it's not hard. It just takes reps. Yes, I shouldn't say it's. It's not. 
You didn't say it was hard. You didn't say it was hard. I should say, I it's, should not say it's not <laughs> natural. It, it may not come naturally. It may not be something we naturally default to because we haven't trained our brain to to create this. Well, thing. Uh, for the sake of thoroughness, I'm gonna I'm gonna comment on that a little bit too. Is that it is natural to us. We've been taught to stop being that way. Like we're returning to who we are. That's why I love the Lion wow. King. Remember who you are. Yeah, this is the way I was prior to being educated to experience reality so problematically. My normal is to experience it in an energized damn wow. way. Yeah, amen. So I'm asking. So the good news here is I'm not learning how to be better, different. I'm just remembering who the hell I was before I was taught to be a nitwit. And this is why we have coaches that challenge us and call us out, aka what Chris is doing right now, to even what I'm saying about being yeah. easy. Um, the two ways, two key ways that we talk about. One was physiological, creating a state of energy through breath. Right? A couple of people said breath, anxiety, shortness of breath, or deepness of breath, serenity. I think of exercise, fit, you know, cardio. Physically, when you get a good workout or cardio, I feel I'm creating a physiological state. I think of smiling. I think of a hug. I think of physiological. And I think of what you're you're adding to it is thoughts. What are you thinking about and actually programming what your images and what what uh, memories come to mind or whatnot or, or visualization, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Both. Yeah. So like even when like for right now, I'm waiting on a hip replacement, so I can't be mobile. I can't move. I can't play tennis. I can't even play golf. Can't, can't do the things I love to do physically. So I'm relying entirely upon my mental strength, you know, for, to, for the practice. I, 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 yeah, I love, love the way I feel when I'm active, right. Physically. I think everyone does. Right. But right now I'm limited. So I'm really, really relying heavily entirely actually upon my ability to uh, pay attention to my thoughts and, and upgrade them constantly all day. No seconds off. And how's it working? Like a charm. Yes. <laughs> That's I mean, the end of the day It's like it you're not work. a hip replacement. You can't golf. You can't play tennis. Like, this is you. So you think that stopped me from having to be the best damn thing? I'm working. I create from all things. Yeah. And I'm pumped about it. And I got the, the reason I haven't had the hip replacement yet is because I chose to get an injection. So I could go walk around Helsinki and have my amazing trip, right? Mm -hmm. So that means you can't get a surgery for three months after that. And I'm, I opted for that, right? And that's cool. And I'm thankful. And I'm also psyched as hell about the technology. And my hip's going to be amazing. You know, it's all good. We crave from all things. I love it. I love it. Well, Chris, um, I want I want to ask if people want to follow your work. This will go out to a lot of people, this video, this recording. Where would you recommend um, the best way to to continue to keep up with you or to consume any of your content. Um, yeah. So if you go to my homepage, so I'm, I am a content creating whack job. Like I'm so committed to that's my legacy. I don't have kids and I'm not going to. So my content is my legacy. So I take that real serious. All right. So I'm pumping out stuff all the time. And uh, so if you go to my homepage, which is ChristopherDoris.com, Right there on the right side, you can go and sign up for my lists, All right? So you, the daily dose is one. All right, I think Leslie, did you said? Did you mention it? Yeah. So um, the daily dose goes out every morning. It's called the daily dose mental toughness tips in thirty seconds or less. So I spent a long time, years, taking all these mental toughness constructs, concepts, disciplines, practices, right, ideas, and then reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing them down to like a neutron star density, concise nugget of instantaneously digestible um, stuff, right? So it goes to your email uh, every morning at 6 a.m. wherever you are in the world. There you go. Good one for everyone watching. Okay. It's under, you. under you list, go. everything. Yeah. So you get all three because then, then you get... Yeah, so it's just a daily dose by itself or the podcast and the blogs. Yeah, and the podcast, um, the podcast name is what, Chris? It's called Tough Talks Conversation. There it is right there. Tough Talks Conversations on Mental Toughness. It's the second bullet point. Yep. So Tough Talks Podcast, the weekly blog, and the daily dose. For anyone who doesn't know what the daily dose is, it's a motivational email that comes out usually between 6 and 7 a.m. Pacific. Six, six, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and it's uh, wake up to yeah, it uh, helps you get your head right first thing in the day. Yeah, and th this comes every day. I've been subscribed for for you years. know. I also want to encourage you know people to well actually to get the book, the book of mental toughness mantras, and keep it handy because and I do. I mean, it's right here, you know, because mm -hmm. I want to like all right, what's which one? I just flip open and see which one. Do it anyway. Do it now. I love that. 
do it anyway. Do it now. Ch- you got yeah. You haven't written. A new, you gotta get go get a new podcast. Uh, I'd rather just go watch the Sixers game right now. To be honest with you, hey, do it anyway. Do it now. Not because I need to. I get to. I'm changing. I'm using this mantra to change my thinking. Right. I love when I get a great podcast like Ian Koniak. Let's go get somebody doing it because everybody gets excited. Let's do that. It's changed my mindset. Right. To so have this handy. Yeah. Right. And um, yeah, that's it. I'd say Chris Doris is one of the most underutilized or undiscovered world's best coaches that I know. I mean, at Salesforce, we had him there coaching and it's, he's just got a wealth of knowledge and wisdom and he practices what he preaches. And I'd say if anything, um, subscribe to that daily dose. It's, it's really powerful. And I hope we can double your volume of subscribers through getting this out because it really is um, help. You need reminders, you need coaches, you need support to be able to um, practice a lot of this. If you just go off and do it on your own, it's it, most likely not going to happen. You've got to have people like Chris and myself in your ear and continually surround yourself with people who think, work, and act this way to be able to really have it embody and permeate through your operating system. So yeah. I'd encourage you to take just a second to subscribe and um, and really have Chris as your coach every share morning. Share it. You know, if you dig the Daily Dose, please share it. That is my request. Because this is a, it's a project that is so dear to my heart, you know, and I'll get message. I get messages every single day from people all over the world. It's just damn beautiful. You know, people, I don't even know who they are. Right. And, and it's like, yo, you have no idea how perfectly timed this was. It's amazing how often I get that message. Yeah. So this is a, this is a project that is so dear to my heart and I do not monetize. I don't ever sell crap. You know, it's just, it's just like, here's the, here's a, a, a gift for the morning. Right. And if you dig it, please share it. In, in this whole thing, I was going to ask you this before, but like you're abundant. You just gave away countless dollars to our, you know, to our group. There's this, this con- concept of when you're giving and when you're serving the abundance and the money and the, um, the wealth will flow. I mean, have you seen well, that in your own life? And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I- there's a phrase I use, which is my bank account balance is a direct reflection of my level of service. Mm-hmm. All I could do is serve the hell out of people. I don't need to, I don't need to worry about money. That comes. It's just something that's an outcome of how you're being. It's a byproduct. It is a spontaneous and is an absolute byproduct of me being genuinely of service and bringing mad value. Yeah. So I don't need to protect anything. I don't never use copyrights. Mm-hmm. I don't trademark crap or whatever. Th- I don't see any, I don't even know what the right language is because I don't care about that crap. I give it all away. Give everything. Give the farm away. Yeah, Sir. it is the go giver. That's what I'm thinking about. Is is Bob Berg's go giver? Um, oh, man, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Let's give him a shout out. Good job. So yeah. if, you haven't, <laughs> if, you haven't, if you haven't read this, do it. Yeah, big time. And big connect time. with him on LinkedIn. He's pro, he's almost as prolific as Ian is on LinkedIn. Yeah, he's uh he's he's phenomenal. And he got back to me. I DM'd him. He wrote me. He right always back. does, man. He's he just, beautiful. He, he practices what he preached, but I would encourage everyone again, the, the reason I'm here, the reason Chris is here with me, the reason that things are flowing is because of a desire to serve. And if you're just focused on the outcome, the commission, the quota, the revenue, again, you're going to not only feel as good, right? In the process, because abundance and giving feels great, but also you're Bank account, your results, your commission is is going to actually suffer because of who you're being, which is self centered and self focused. So, um, I think there's a lot to to digest there. But Chris, you you embody that, and and just how you've shown up for me for everyone today. And I just want to say thank you for your generosity. Amen. You are welcome, and I appreciate you so much, man. All right, everyone. Thank you, Chris Doris. And thank you for all the Untap Your Sales Potential members for joining us. This was a lot of fun. We went way long. This has been our longest fireside chat yet. So again, thank you for staying with us extra. And got it. Uh, I really appreciate you, brother. And uh, I uh, will be praying for your successful hip surgery coming up very oh, soon. And thank you. All, all, and all the goodness that's going to come out of that situation afterwards. And yeah. when I'm in Arizona, you can kick my butt in golf. So uh, <laughs> I will see, I will see you soon. Thanks everyone. Take care everybody. Take care. Right, bye-bye. Yeah.